In this video, I'm going to be showing you a patient with bilateral iris transillumination defects. Do you think you can figure out the cause before I tell you? Let's have a look at the first eye. So, the cornea looks nice and clear. The patient's obviously pseudophagic. You can see there's actually some posterior capsular opacification there, some PCO. And that's when we look with direct illumination. Maybe some retroillumination will be a bit more helpful to make it more clear. So there we go, we can see that posterior capsular opacification. Just for reference, let's draw that on there. And that's the area through which the PCO might be causing some visual blur. And you can really see that it is really in the central visual axis. Let's carry on. You can also see that transillumination defect there. Almost looks like the end of a broomstick, maybe a wonky one. So the anterior chamber is clear. We can see that the anterior vitreous is also clear. There's no pigment or any cells. Let's have a look at the back of the eye. Now, I would say that the view of the fundus here, the optic nerve, the retinal vessels, is slightly hazy. And a good general rule is that if your view of the fundus is hazy, then the patient's view of the world is probably quite hazy too. Now, in this case, it's not super hazy. We can make out retinal details. We can look at the detail of the optic nerve, but it's not crisp or sharply in focus. Let's have a look at the other eye. So again, pseudophagic. And we can see that there's some beginning of some anterior capsular phimosis. That's the edge of the capsular rexis contracting inwards there. And that gives you a clue as to how long ago the surgery was, maybe some months ago. And we can't really see as much posterior capsular opacification in this patient. The anterior chamber looks quiet. Anterior vitreous looks quiet, no pigment or any cells. Cornea looking nice and clear. Let's have a look at that retroillumination, maybe a defect superiorly. And there we go, we can see two defects in this patient. There are two transillumination defects, one superiorly, one at the side. And this patient hasn't had a peripheral iridotomy. Let's give you a clue now. So the patient has dilated small pupils, which aren't too large. And actually, as part of cataract surgery, they've had a pupil expansion device, a malugan ring used. And when you use such devices, you can cause some trauma to the iris, which do leave these transillumination defects. Here we can see the optic nerve and the retinal details and the retinal vessels look a lot clearer. You can actually see some spontaneous venous pulsation there. Let's draw that on there. So here we have it, the case of bilateral transillumination defects caused by pupil expansion devices during cataract surgery. The patient is completely asymptomatic and very happy with the surgery outcome. But just be aware of this in the future if you see it.